Okay, we uh, we are streaming live now. <coughs> okay, Greg, we're good to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're ready. If you are, uh, we haven't um, haven't seen John Simmons yet. Uh, I haven't uh, haven't heard from him, but if we if he joins the waiting room, I'll, I'll let him in part way. We can go ahead and time. Okay, awesome. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to East Ferris Committee of Adjustment meeting for Wednesday, July 21st at seven o'clock and this is brought to you through Zoom. First item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. If anyone can make a motion to accept the agenda. I got Frank and I got Al. Okay, all those in favor? It's carried, thank you very much. Accepting the minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on June 16th, 2021. If I could have a motion on that. We have Erica and we have Terry. All those in favor? It is carried. Thank you very much. This disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Does anyone have any uh, conflict of interest on in any of the applications coming forward? If so, say it now, declare it now. That is good. We're ready to move forward. Ratepayers delegations, we have none for this evening, Greg, that's correct. Okay, thank you. And any business arising from the last meeting? We have none, thank you very much. We're gonna be moving forward into the public hearings. We have four of them tonight, but before we start, I'd like to uh, again, welcome everyone to this uh, meeting. The Council of the Municipality of East Ferris has empowered this committee to make decisions on minor variants and consent to sever applications on their behalf. The committee is made up of five citizen members and two members of council. And the members are as follows and we'll introduce them. We'll go with our council members first, uh, starting with Erica. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erica. Thank you, and Terry. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, thank you. And then we'll go to uh, Alan and uh, Frank. Alan? Hi, I'm Alan Harris. Thank you. And I'm Frank Torbiel. Thank you, Frank. And I am John O'Rourke. In tonight's meeting, we have Carrie Hansman. She is our recording secretary. Thank you, Carrie. And then, of course, Greg Curtin. As required under the Planning Act and pursuant to policy, the committee is holding a public meeting prior to making a decision on the proposed applications. The Committee of Adjustment has not yet made any decisions on these matters and all comments received prior to this evening's meetings, as well as comments received tonight during the meeting will be considered in the decision. The committee, ma the committee makes our decision based on the criteria outlined in the Planning Act and corresponds to specific types of applications. The process will be as follows. I will ask the applicant to present their application in the order listed on the agenda. The committee will ask any questions they have of the applicant. Staff will, will provide their comments about the application and give an overview of correspondence that has been received. Members of the public will then be asked or will be present and can answer questions if needed. And we will move forward with a motion to either approve, approve, refuse, or defer the application. We ask that everyone be respectable in their presentations and all comments should be related directly to the application. If any committee member has a conflict, we've already discussed that. We'll move forward with the first item on the agenda, which is Doug and Mary Mural, file A202105, vacant land on non-sponsoring non park road. Uh, is Doug and Mary, uh, can we invite, invite them in? Yes, uh, they uh, are only able to connect via telephone. So we have them, I believe, here for audio only. Okay. Do we want- uh, Doug and Mary, are you there? Yes, we are. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for being with us tonight. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mural, and we're looking at some vacant land and non-sponsoring, and it's to, yes, permit, it's to permit the construction of a 20 by 40 cottage. Can you please uh, present your application to us? Yes, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and try here. Um, 
Uh, first, thanks for hearing the application. Um, we bought this half acre property on Nasponsing Park Road uh, in March. Um, part of that acre, the uh, dimensions of the, of the lot are in the water. Um, so we're hoping to build a, a small cottage uh, on a septic system uh, on the north side of the lot. Uh, the minor variance application uh, is really just to accommodate that. And we're looking for a reduction in the, in the setback of uh, 20 meters down to 14.6. Uh, that's on the front of the lot or the lakeside. And we're looking for a reduction on the setback to the road, um, the back of the lot from eight meters to five meters. Um, as far as uh, some work we've done on the property, we've uh, uh, had talked with the, the um, North Bay Mattawa Conservation Authority and they had um, had expressed maybe having a septic design uh, done for the, for the lot because we were interested in seeing if we could put a septic on the property. And uh, so we had a septic designer, um, uh, Carolyn Newby, um, come out and she looked at the lot and then subsequently designed uh, the septic system for us uh, and submitted it on our behalf to the Conservation Authority uh, who, who's approved that design. Uh, it's an eco flow, so it's one of the uh, tertiary systems, I believe they call it, but it, it, it's got a secondary sort of a filtering process that goes on. Um, so that's been approved, I guess, uh, provisionally on how the rest of the uh, uh, of the lot goes. I know there's going to be a site plan. I know there's another development um, application that has to be done with uh, the Conservation Authority. Um, and, and then of course the building permit before we get to the final stages. But uh, we're hoping at this point that um, we could get the variance to, to continue going forward. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any questions of the uh, applicant, any members of the committee right now? Uh, yes, Frank. The uh, the um, the lot apparently is of size to accommodate um, the building that you're you're looking to build, the cottage. Uh, why uh, why the minor variances? Um. Well, the, the setback from the front of the lot uh, is 20 meters. And uh, if we don't have the uh, adjustments at the front and the back, I don't think there would be enough room left to actually put a, 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 bu a building in there. So the uh, <clears throat> we're looking to take the, the setback down to about 48 feet from the water and um, about 15, 16 feet from, from the lot line or from the road. Um, well, from the lot line so that we can put the building in there. The building's uh, conceived to be 20 by 40. Okay. So unfortunately some of the, that lot is, is in the lake. Uh, otherwise originally as it was conceived and built or laid out, I mean, we would have enough room without the minor variance probably, but since the, the water has taken some of that uh, land away, um, we would need the, the minor variances. Does that answer it, Frank? Yeah, thank you. Alan, you have a question? Yeah, that actually is more for Greg than it is for the, uh, for the presenter, but, uh, this particular piece of property has been for sale a number of times over the years since I've moved here. And normally it was put up for sale with a proviso that you could not build on it. What has changed with respect to this property that now allows a possible building to be put on it? Uh, sure, I can try to answer that. So, um, so I guess the short answer is nothing has changed. It, it, it's always been possible to apply for a minor variance and try to do what they're doing here. 
uh, in the past, um, I, I guess uh, from hearing from some of the residents on the road, uh, past real estate agents have marketed as a, as a recreational property. And, um, and I guess that's a choice they decided to make at the time as far as trying to market it for sale. Uh, it's, um, it, it, so in a sense, um, in a sense, uh, it's not buildable in its current state, like under current bylaw regulations. Um, so the difficulty with this property, uh, this is kind of to Frank's question as well. Uh, there, so there are three properties across the road and one property directly adjacent to the north uh, that are very similar in size, about 0 0.1 of an acre difference. Uh, it's just that this property is shallower, so wider and shallower towards the lake. Uh, so the reason why that's problematic is that uh, it doesn't allow for an adequate building envelope uh, because of the shallow depth of the lot. Uh, so I've, I've been approached personally about this lot uh, a handful of times, maybe four or five times in the three years that I've been in with the municipality. And uh, my answer to, uh, to any prospective buyers uh, was always that uh, there's, there's not an adequate building envelope uh, under existing bylaw standards. Uh, however, with the right, propo or right proposal, you may wish to apply for a minor variance and see if the committee would grant a uh, setback reduction. Um, so it's, uh, nothing has changed with the, the zoning or, or any regulations around in the lot. Uh, it's just that uh, I guess this is the first time someone has been willing to take on the, the you know, effort and project of going through a minor variance. Uh, so that's, um, that, that sums up the answer to the question. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, Alan, go ahead. Is it me, John? Yes. Then the, those other properties that you're talking about that are nearby, what sort of septic systems do they have on their properties? Uh, I'm unaware what type of septic systems they have. Uh, the, so, so the septic system that has been approved by the Conservation Authority for this lot is, uh, is about the most stringent, uh, aside from a fully customized design, uh, something that you, you know, just don't really see a standard implementation. Uh, this is the, uh, the most efficient, most stringently regulated type of system that's, uh, that's commonly installed. Uh, so the system here proposed is, is better uh, better at least or equal to all the other ones. Um, I feel like it's worth pointing out though that the minor variance application uh, is not related to the septic system. Uh, you'll notice that there's no variance request related to it um, because the, the septic system is, is not subject to a bylaw regulation change. Uh, so what, what's specifically being asked of tonight by, uh, to the committee is whether it's appropriate to reduce the front and rear yard setback to, uh, to the dwelling. Um, so the, the septic system is, uh, I, I know that that is the focus of a lot of the public comments as well, uh, but we should keep in mind that that's not actually subject to the minor variance application. Greg, uh, can I just add another question to that? Yes. Um, uh, correct me here if I'm wrong, but I understood, or at least I thought I read in the, in the documentation that you sent out the other day with respect to this application, uh, with res and the letter that Paula Scott sent out, I, I did not get the impression that the septic system has been approved. Now, am I wrong on that? Uh, it's been approved um, provisionally pending the outcome of this application. So if this application is approved, then it will be approved. Uh, but if this application is not approved, uh, then they're not going to allow a septic system to be built or built on a vacant lot. So it will be refused in that case. Okay, well then I guess, uh, I hear what you're saying that uh, that this committee is not asked to comment on that, but the two are linked. They are linked, but it's not. Uh, they're not asking for a deviation from the East Paris bylaw for anything related to the septic. It's related to the building only. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, Terry, you have a question or a comment? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, for 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 starters, for Greg, don't we have a bylaw that states you need a hectare or an acre of land to build near the lake? Uh, so all of our lot size minimums are related to, uh, to new lot creation. Um, th this, is, this is similar to what we went over with uh, the application at the last uh, uh, Planning Advisory Committee meeting where, uh, where we discussed uh, lot sizes for existing versus new, uh, uh, new development. Um, so so if, if they were proposing a land severance here, their lot would be far too small and we wouldn't be talking about creating a lot this size. Uh, but an existing lot of record uh, by definition, is is legal non or legal non conforming rather because it's a legally existing lot. Okay. Uh, okay. My second question is for the applicant. 
were you aware that it was a non-building lot when you bought it? Um, well, when I bought it, the, the real estate agent had suggested um, that you couldn't uh, couldn't put an RV on it, um, that recreational use and that. But there was this sort of understanding that possibly uh, I could maybe build something. And, and I had sort of uh, inquired with the municipality early on um, that if we could go through a minor variance process, that there might be a chance to build a small cottage on the property. So we bought it with the, the hope um, quite frankly, that we could put a small cottage on the property. Thank you. That's a, that's a tough one, Terry, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's, it's, well, the, the, reason, the reason for the change is, and I've been around for a number of years on council and I was on planning when I started out. The reasons before I was on council, the reasons for the changes is the quality of the lake. It's always a concern with any, with any freshwater lake. And Nosman Singh is a headwater lake. So it feeds into the Mattawa River through Talon Lake and then fence, hence feeds to the Ottawa and then to the St. Lawrence. Headwater lakes are very, very serious as far as the risk of contamination downstream. Because Nosman Singh is basically, other than Depot Creek, it's basically spring fed. So we've been trying to protect the water and we do water studies on a regular basis. And this may be setting a dangerous precedent allowing the, I mean, we're, we're allowing, if, if we allow it, it's a third, taking a, basically over 25% off as far as closeness to the water. So I, that's, that's my concern. And uh, the lot was bought with the knowledge that it might not be accepted. But and my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Erica, do you have any questions or comments? No, most of my questions were answered in the documents provided. Um, my initial concern was just rising water levels. It's a, it's a low lying area too, right? Um, and, uh, you know, if it's already part underwater, what, I mean, that's a fate that I'm sure the applicants have already considered um, what the what the future could look like for that. Um, but yeah, that, all my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Uh, Greg, my question is the setback um, we're not, we haven't, we haven't talked about the Lakeshore road allowance. So is there, um, dry Lakeshore road allowance in front of the property line that's been indicated on the drawings? Um, virtually all of the Lakeshore road allowances have been closed and merged with adjacent properties on Nosmanson Park Road. So there, there is no Lakeshore road allowance on this property. So that, that, uh, setback is based basically right up, that's at the max. It won't get any better. So the step back reduction that they're requesting, uh, when the applicant mentioned that uh, the property went into the water, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of irrelevant uh, because the setback is 20 meters required from the water line. So when the applicant was doing their, uh, their planning for this, uh, they got the water line and property boundaries staked by a survey crew. And that's what they used to draw their, uh, their map from. So okay. the 20 meter setback, uh, the reduction they're asking for is from the existing water line. So it, it really doesn't have anything to do with where the property boundary may or may not end in the water. Okay, thank you. That was my concern and question. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a doozy, it's a tough one. It is a real tough one. You said it was a lot of record in the eyes of the municipality all along. And what does a lot of record mean? Does it mean you can build on it or it's just a vacant <laughs> land? What's the value of vacant land? What I meant by that was it was a legally existing lot. Uh, so uh, so essentially, um, if they came in for a building permit on it uh, and didn't need any zoning modifications, uh, we would we would have to grant it. It, it has the, the rights associated with any other legally existing lot. Uh, it, um, it has always been zoned lakefront residential. Uh, so a number of people have said that it uh, may have been zoned something different at, the, at some point, but it, it has always been a residentially zoned lot. So aside from the inability to, aside from the setback reductions, uh, it's um, a legally existing lot with residential zoning. Okay. Does that mean that you could go and build four bunkies and not have a house? Uh, well, no, because no matter what, he's still going to run into the problem of the 20 meter setback from the water. 
Uh, so the, the house, um, and then, uh, so we, we would also have to consider anything much bigger would be running into lot coverage issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so 10% lot coverage is still also permitted on this lot. Uh, so the applicant's proposal, um, I, I, I think considered the scale of the lot fairly well in that it's about 6.5% lot coverage. So they're coming in below the coverage on a very small lot. Uh, so it's, um, it's a fairly reasonable proposal uh, in size relative to the scale of the lot, I would say. Mm -hmm. Terry, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, John, uh, just, uh, just for just a little background info, I've been on the lake since uh, the early 50s, 1950s. And one is the lake has continued to rise. The other thing back in the 50s and 60s, there were very few regulations um, when I was a boy, most of the land that has, has houses on it now were farms. And they made up lots and uh, there was no thought of water quality or size of the lot. You basically could build whatever you wanted. But most of them were cottages now. And now, of course, they've all evolved into homes, permanent homes. So that's why there's small lots still around. Now, the West Basin on Nosman Singh has been frozen for a few years now where this is in the big lake, but still, uh, this, this lot, if it's part of it's underwater now, it, that's going to continue to morph that way. The lake has not receded. And as I say, I've been on the lake for over 60 years. So it's, it's a major concern when part of the lot's underwater now, because everything is rising. I mean, with climate change and so forth, mm -hmm. it's, it's a major concern. But that's a little history on why the lots are so small, because most of them were seasonal dwellings and there was no thought given to having, uh, I mean, all, the, most of the houses on Nosman Singh were farmhouses back in the day. So correct me if I'm wrong here, I might be missing something here, but I think the number one polluter on the lake is probably a septic system or a bad septic system. And that's what Greg said, this is not about the septic system, this is all about a lot reduction for our building. Back in the day, Terry, back in 1950, we probably had cesspools and very poor septic systems and we want to improve the quality of the lake. If we're going with the most efficient septic system and we're still above the Ontario guidelines, that's not a bad thing. But again, it's not about the septic, it's about the building. And yeah. I think there are closer buildings than what's being presented. But I know that this is setting a precedent. I don't want to do that, but it is a lot of record that's a small lot, you know. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> as far as pollution goes, I'd put, I'd put the use of the land itself as the major contributor because I see a lot of fertilizer i see a lot of green grass i see water systems on the lake watering their lawns mm. and i see people clear cutting right down to the lake well, and I that's do too, I and do. that's a, as a rule that's on trout lake and our lake okay it, it, it is but again we have site plan control so then it comes to are we policing it and by line but that's not our committee that's not us. you know no but uh are would there you there would be site plan controls on us correct greg yeah, I can give a little more background on site plan control. So this question has also came up. Um, so site plan control can pretty much only be implemented through a building permit being applied for. Uh, so we've only had site plan control in place in the municipality for coming up on about 20 years now. Uh, so it requires the redevelopment of a property in order to actually implement an agreement. So it takes time to get agreements in place for properties that, that don't have them. Uh, so aside from that, we have we have limited control over uh, older existing lots that have clear cut. But any new builds and new properties that are that are coming into into place, we have a site plan control agreements that uh, require minimum 15 meter vegetative buffers along the shoreline with access corridors. Uh, so so this one would have a vegetative buffer um, essentially along the whole front, with the exception of where the cottage is. That's where their access corridor would be. Um, and, uh, and we, we get those in place anytime we get major redevelopments now. So, so we're transitioning to having, having them for hopefully most of the lakefront property soon. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to add one more thing uh, about lake health. I, th I think it'd be helpful for, for the background uh, for the committee. Um, this section of the lake, uh, the committee may be aware that we commissioned Hutchison Environmental uh, over the course of last year to uh, do a water quality study. And uh, one of the things we specifically looked at was, uh, was capacity, uh, capacity for whether new lots could be developed, uh, including, including septic systems and, uh, and runoff that you would consider. Um, overland runoff that, uh, that Terry mentioned is one of, if not the main contributor to, uh, to lake pollution. Uh, so, so it looked at all those factors. And in, uh, in, in, this, in the larger basin of the lake in this area, 
uh, it was found that there was theoretical capacity for, for 300 and something new lots uh, under the assumption that every lot existing was a permanent dwelling with a septic system that matched. So it's, um, it's definitely, definitely not a concern to install a septic system based on those parameters. Uh, you know, we, we, if we have the capacity for hundreds of new lots to be created. Um, but, but again, we're not speaking about septic here. That's not what the variance application is for. But I just thought it was helpful to give some background on uh, the state of the water quality in this portion of the lake. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Mural, do you have any, any comments or anything to add to it after the questions that have been, or concerns that have been brought forward? Um, if I may, I just, I, I think we're trying to um, put a, a modest uh, cottage property in there. Um, we're a little bit flexible on dimensions if, if, you know, if there was issues in that regard. Uh, I understand the, the, the concerns about septic system. I live on one now uh, where we live in Fergus. Um, this is a high tech one. I, I sought out the, the high tech style and uh, the capacity of this particular septic system exceeds uh, the proposal for the cottage we're trying to build, we're, we're talking two bedroom, two bath. The septic system was rated at uh, three bedroom, two bath. The conservation authority seems to be all right with it. So I, I, just, I, I feel that that issue with the water quality and all the rest of it is, has, I hope, been somewhat addressed through, through that process. Um, uh, that's all I guess I, I could add to it. Um, we're, okay. we're just looking for, for modest setba setbacks to try and, and put a, a small cottage on that side of the lot. And, and we're staying to the north side of the lot so we can, we can give it as much setback from the water as possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, Greg, uh, any comments we've received tonight before we open it up to uh, the public? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, sure. So I'll, uh, I'll start with comments that we received from the North Bay Model Conservation Authority. Uh, so the Conservation Authority uh, uh, submitted comments. Um, they, they touched on the septic system, which we've already uh, already discussed in detail. Uh, they mentioned that it's a, a class four eco or eco flow biofilter system, so tertiary system. Uh, it is um, 0.5 meters above grade as well. Uh, so it's um, the applications on hold pending the approval of this application. Uh, they looked at floodplain mapping and found that the floodplain uh, runs uh, essentially along the shoreline. Uh, so the property, uh, the majority of it's not in any floodplain location uh, and uh, the cottage area is not. Um, they did indicate that, um, uh, that a survey of elevations may be required to confirm the exact extent of the floodplain. Uh, but based on their mapping, there are no concerns. Uh, they, they did go into some details that, uh, that are more geared towards uh, a site plan, or site plan control agreement uh, uh, application uh, if the application were to be approved. Uh, but they mentioned that uh, best practices for a site like this would be to uh, limit vegetation removal to, to just the necessary areas. So the areas where the septic building and driveway would go. Uh, they also mentioned that uh, it may be helpful to require uh, things like French drains or soak away pits for, uh, for stormwater running off the rooftop. Uh, and then they also mentioned that uh, low impact structures, uh, as, as far as the dock uh, goes, like post supported with minimal disturbance to the shoreline would be preferable. Uh, these things are also subject to uh, a DIA permit from the Conservation Authority. So they would also have input in, uh, in any dock structure that was built and, uh, and uh, we would consult them through a site plan control agreement. Uh, then we received a number of comments uh, from, from residents on the road. Uh, so I'll go through these. Uh, some of them just came in today, so you won't have all of them in your package. Uh, but we received um, a comment from Cheryl and Kevin Archer of 653 Nosman St. Park Road uh, stating, that they are the adjacent property owners and they have concerns with uh, the location of the septic system. Uh, they, uh, they are also, uh, they're also concerned about the, the setbacks and they feel that uh, 
uh, well, they, they feel that they go back to the septic system and what the setback is from the septic system. Uh, so that is the primary primary concern on their part. Uh, we received comments from uh, Michael Michael Lucier of 608 and Osmond Park Road. Uh, he is also concerned about uh, about the lake health. Uh, he mentioned that there have been uh, blue green algae blooms uh, spotted on the lake, and uh, he has concerns that uh, that in the future damaged septic system may contribute to that. Uh, we received comments from uh, Ingrid Vandermerrill of 719 Osmond St. Park Road, and she mentions that uh, in the past uh, this this lot was labeled as not suitable for building, and she uh, had some questions about about what uh, what may have changed. Uh, then she also has concerns about the septic system and had some questions about what regulation and what type of setback would be required for that. Uh, we received a comment from Lise Curry uh, of 646 Nosman St. Park Road. Uh, Lise's comments uh, center predominantly around um, the accuracy of the measurements. Uh, so, uh, she mentions that she feels that it's inappropriate to move forward without uh, a survey having been done to know the exact setback that would be required uh, and mentions that uh, there's a discrepancy between uh, a plan that she had pulled uh, of the old original subdivision plan as to where the, the lot line was. Uh, and then we received a comment from uh, Mike and Kelly Brown, uh, they uh, also had questions about uh, what the zoning of the property was and whether it has changed. Uh, I've, I've followed up with them to, to discuss that already. Uh, and they also had concerns about the septic system and additionally went on to ask about whether this application could serve as a precedent for future applications to reduce setbacks to the water. Uh, we also received a comment from uh, Alicia Sloan Keats. Uh, she has concerns that. Uh, uh, oh, one second. Did we did we lose Frank? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I just noticed that my cell phone was ringing and it was Frank, so I just noticed that I needed to readmit him. My apologies. Uh, so we also received a comment from uh, Alicia Sloan Keats of 603 Nosmanson Park Road. Uh, she believes that, uh, that the variance uh, request is, um, is numerically too significant and, uh, and should uh, not be approved because of that. Uh, she also had questions about, uh, about lake health and, uh, and that the reduction in the setback uh, should not be allowed because uh, it is intended to protect the lake. Uh, she also mentions that the setbacks have not changed uh, since the property owners purchased the property and feels that, uh, that they should have known that. Uh, she also mentions uh, the, the drainage on the site and, and feels that the property would be phoned, or prone to flooding and, uh, and it should not be approved for that reason. And we... Uh, that is all actually. That is the last resident comment that we received. And the only other piece of correspondence was uh, was my report, uh, which um, many of the things in our preliminary discussion that have already been touched on. Uh, but um, but ultimately, uh, what uh, what we're being asked of here is to is to determine uh, whether it's appropriate to reduce the front yard and rear yard setback. And uh, so, so the first thing we need to look at uh, is what the planning act requirements are for approving a minor variance. Uh, so we predominantly need to look at uh, whether it meets the general intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw, and whether it's appropriate for the development of the site and whether it's minor in nature. Uh, so in looking at what the intent of the official plan and uh, zoning bylaw are, um, generally speaking, the intent of setbacks are to uh, provide for um, a somewhat uniform development of properties in an area uh, to provide separation distance from uh, neighboring adjacent properties, uh, that goes along with privacy. Um, in this case, uh, setback from the water could provide multiple reasons. It could be for uh, erosion protection, shoreline protection, um, 
blade protection, of course, uh, limiting the area that runoff or increasing the area that runoff has to go before it reaches the lake. Um, we're looking at uh, so, so we're looking at a property that's designated and zoned to allow for a residential dwelling. So we're we don't have any use conflicts. So so the main question we need to answer is is whether or not those setback reductions are appropriate. Um, and I, ultimately, I, I feel that they are because the, the dwelling that they're proposing is is reasonable in scale to the property. Uh, they've cited it in a way that. They've reduced each setback a little bit to get the optimal location on the lot. Uh, they, they could have applied for one variance to reduce only one of the setbacks, uh, like being the, you know, the water side or the rear yard side. Uh, but had they done that, the dwelling would be in a suboptimal spot. So it, it is an appropriate request for the development of the lot. Um, and when we're looking at uh, the question of whether or not it's minor, um, one of the things that came up in a couple of comments was, uh, was the numerical reduction. Uh, it, it's not really about, uh, so the question of minor traditionally has been more about, uh, about impact. So what impact would reducing these setbacks have? Uh, we're, we're looking at a situation where, where the floodplain doesn't come close to where the proposed dwelling is, uh, where there's no significant curve in the road or anything that would that would cause a problem from the, the setback being reduced on the uh, rear yard side. Um, the driveway also comes to the side of the house, so it doesn't reduce the ability for a, a vehicle to park between the lot line and, uh, and where the dwelling is. So th th there's really no, no significant impact. Uh, the neighboring properties, uh, there's, no, there's no side yard setback reduction, so we're not looking at a situation where there's, uh, where there's a privacy impact or, or anything like that to a neighboring property. Uh, so, so based on all those reasons, um, I, I feel that uh, the applicant did, did a good job actually of, of designing an appropriate proposal for the lot. Um, yes, they need variances to, to do it, uh, but if, um, if we couldn't account for, uh, you know, slightly out of the ordinary situations uh, and, and we always had to follow the bylaw, then we, we wouldn't have minor variance processes. So, uh, so I think uh, I think we're looking at overall a pretty reasonable proposal. So that's the reason for the approval recommendation in my report. Thank you, Greg. Um, Greg, do we have anyone in the uh, in the uh, chat room that wants to make? Yes, call? we do. We have uh, we have three people, I believe, that want to speak to this application. So if if you're ready, I can let the first person in. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Maybe a reminder about the YouTube too. To turn that off before people come on. Oh right, if, uh, just a suggestion because I always know it's a struggle when people come on, right? Because they're listening to it at the same time. It's yeah. almost every time. That's a great suggestion. Uh, yes, to anyone that's watching on YouTube, uh, when we admit to you to speak, uh, if you could please uh, mute the YouTube stream because we often get a lot of feedback through the the volume from the YouTube channel. Uh, so with that, I will uh, I will admit the speakers in in the order that uh, that they're listed in the waiting room. Uh, can you hear us, Alicia? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Alicia, can you state your address and your last name as well? Sorry, I have, I'm trying to listen to Greg at the same time. If you could give us your last name and your address. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my last name is Sloan Keats. S L O A N hyphen K E A T S, and I'm at 603 Not Sponsoring. So you. I guess, am I in the meeting now? Yes, um, you are. I was, <laughs> I guess I had delay on the live stream because I was still listening to Greg's comments. Okay. So okay. I guess I missed some stuff. So I apologize if, um, <laughs> if I'm out, out of the loop a little bit. Um, I'm, I imagine you're asking me to present my comments. Yes, we are. And is your YouTube, your YouTube video is off? Audio, audio is off? 
Uh, yeah, I just paused okay. it. Thank yeah. you. Okay, you could give us your comments and concerns. Yeah, uh, well, I want to thank the committee for this opportunity to express my concerns um, myself. Um, Mr. Curtin didn't really go through all of the points that, that I had expressed. There were a few more that I think haven't been discussed during this meeting. So um, thanks for this opportunity. Um, I am concerned with this um, proposal. Um, as Greg did mention, that it is a major deviation from the existing um, setbacks. Um, and I believe it uh, violates the spirit of the bylaws that we have to protect the lake. Um, we know that there are other properties um, closely connected to this, this property that are, have lower setbacks, but those were built before the, the laws were changed, as Terry had mentioned, and we didn't take as much um, care about the health of our lake. So um, I think that allowing a new development or infill development, which is popular in the cities where they want to concentrate po um, populations, but here we don't want to do that. We want to allow development, but within the setbacks that, um, that have been improved with these environmental considerations that have, you know, we know is the right way to move forward. Um, and we are, from what I understand that the, the movement, you know, for our municipality, the older properties, we're trying to get them into, you know, taking care care and replanting areas and even when the properties change um, change ownership to to make things more stringent on those older properties so I think that allowing a new development with the old um, comparing to the older rules is uh, contrary to the spirit um, and the intent of our community to protect to protect this lake so as Terry had mentioned that yes um, we want to protect the lake it's a sensitive lake because it's a head head lake, headwaters, but my children also swim in this lake and they um, swim in the, um, the flow that comes from the properties, uh, including that one, one there too. So um, I was concerned about the septic uh, initially, obviously that is the biggest concern, the most obvious one. Um, I spoke with the conservation authority and they did tell me that uh, tertiary system was um, was being considered. So I was happy about that um, because you know it is um, more stringent than uh, the more traditional systems. Um, but they're also inefficient, as all septic systems are. Uh, when they're flooded <laughs> or when they're in water. And this lot is very small. There's not a lot of room to um, set up French drains or storm, storm uh, water collection. So any, and, and it's always wet. Like we walk the dog by there regularly. Everyone knows that that property is always wet. So I'm wondering, you know, the efficiency of a septic system that could be flooded um, without the property owners even knowing because they're not um, regular residents, they're recreational residents. Um, so that is a major concern for me, the septic, but also the stormwater drain, drain off um, from the road, which is right very close to this property. So things would be coming from the road and from their proposed driveway right into the lake and if not right into the lake, then onto the, the neighboring properties and also um, possibly um, interrupting the road, although the property is low. So I think the risk of um, flooding onto the road is, is less so than flooding into the lake or onto the neighboring properties because there is not a lot of room for st stormwater drain off um, to manage that on the property itself. And obviously the highest risk is that the septic system um, could be flooded in that case and not be monitored regularly. Um, it was mentioned the precedence set for any other development on the lake of these smaller lots. Um, and anybody really who's developing on the lake, you know, <laughs> minor variance, just because the lot size is smaller, what's stopping other people from asking for variances as well? And why wouldn't we approve them? Um, just because they have a bigger property. Thank you, thank you very um, much. The development is also very close to the road. So when it, um, they're in construction phase 
or any maintenance phase, or even when they're using that property, um, it's hard to imagine how it won't have a negative impact on the traffic flow. Um, it's a major road. There are several properties that have no other, like it, it's the only road access that they have. And um, it would cause major disruption um, in accessing their properties. And for emergency services, I think is the most critical in that case. Um, and it's been mentioned that we could um, put in these site control agreements, but it doesn't, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that the municipality currently has the resources to enforce or to monitor those uh, site control agreements. So I think that, you know, maybe possibly if there is a site control agreement, um, something could be worked out, but we don't have the capacity right now as a municipality to monitor or to enforce those control agreements. And um, by relying on those agreements, we're really just pushing the problem to you know, the future municipal officials. Um, and also on the, the neighbors, why is it the neighbor's responsibility to monitor what's happening there and to report it? It doesn't, um, doesn't enhance or encourage um, a neighborly environment to always, you know, feel the, the responsibility to protect the lake by watching out what your neighbor is doing because the municipality doesn't have the resources right now to, to enforce these site control, control agreements. Um, uh, and just going over the Hutchison study that was mentioned, I'm wondering, um, and then they, they said that, or was said that there was, possibility that the lake had capacity to have 300 plus lots in this area. I wonder if that um, is considering the lake, the lots being developed under the new rules or under the old, older rules with houses um, or construction being done so close to the lake. So these 300 plus lots, I imagine that that would be under the current, current provisions and not for development of this type that is being uh, requested. The pollution in the lake, as um, Terry had mentioned, is a lot from fertilizers. And we see that um, there's nothing stopping people from using, using fertilizers. And we see the impact in the lake. Um, the drain off, uh, that property has a berm um, between the lake and the main part of the lot. That's why it's wet a lot. So um, it's, I don't think it's far fetched to imagine that, that that berm will be removed or in part at least to install a dock. So that means that everything will drain directly into the lake. And that is all the points I had. Thank you for your consideration. Alicia, thank you very much. That was, your concerns were noted and appreciated. Thank you very much. Greg, do we have anyone else in the chat room? Uh, yes. With you. Um, just one moment. Uh, the next person in line, uh, they're not one of the people that uh, is not the name of a person that I spoke with directly, but uh, but it may be a spouse's or, or something like that. So I'm going to admit them and maybe we'll just ask them uh, if they're here for this application. Uh, hi, uh, Anna. Uh, if you can hear us, Anna, we're, we're seeing your name is Anna, but we're just wondering if you're here to speak to uh, application A 2021-05, the uh, Morel minor variants. Sorry, just had to unmute. It'll actually be my husband, Jim Braun, speaking. Okay, perfect. Am I okay to speak? Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. You know, it's kind of funny uh, when you have something like this come up. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of so many people being concerned about 
the environment and the lake, like this application uh, brought about. Um, I have a few concerns, like most of my neighbors, I guess. We've got a, a, a really small piece of property uh, there. It's a shallow, it was called shallow. Um, I'm not sure the exact dimensions, but I, I noted uh, that Greg mentioned that Lee's had a concern about the actual measurements of the, the property, but, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, at the widest part, it's about 85 feet and at the narrow part, 65. So uh, to, to me, that's a really small piece of property and they're trying to put, uh, I understand it, a 20 uh, by 40 cottage there. And I understand about most things. But I guess the first thing that uh, hit me off the beginning, uh, it came in and the sign says the minor variance. Well, to be honest, we, we've got uh, concerns about that. Now under section 45.1 of the Planning Act, there, there's our understanding is that there's four tests a minor various variance must meet. And the first one um, is the application minor. Now our interpretation is that the, the requested 5.4 meter front yard decrease in setback and the five meter uh, rear yard decrease in setback, totaling 10.4 meters, that represents 40% of an increase in the depth of the property. And that's approximately, I think, 25.7 meters deep at its widest point. So you have a, a, a shallow piece of property and already you're setting it back that much? So to us, a 40% increase to the property use does not represent a minor variance. In fact, it's, we believe it's a significant one. The other thing I'll say is that the, uh, the applicants uh, indicating an intention to build a cottage 20 by 40. Now, is this an inside? measurement or an outside, because there's a difference. If it's an inside measurement, then we also have to add uh, at the lake side, another foot at least, and then another one to two feet of roof overhang. So all of a sudden it's now more a setback than, than actually uh, is stated. The other, th um, the other thing I would say is that uh, I noticed in the drawings that uh, there's a screen porch. That to me also adds uh, a footprint into the land that's being used. And therefore, uh, I think that should be considered too. And uh, one of the questions I had for myself, when I saw the, um, the screen structure, was that part of the 20 by 40 that was submitted to you, Greg? Um, I got the same picture that you did. The other concern uh, that we had, um, you know what, that uh, septic system, and I know that's not part of this, but it's awfully close to the lake. And the drawing that was submitted is just an approximate, but even by that drawing, it's close. So if you took the uh, comments that um, Alicia made, yeah, we're worried. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention um, as far as the test for minor, in the application, um, is the application desirable for the appropriate development of the lands in question? Now we submit the, the clearing of the lot to allow for the building of a permanent structure 
will significantly increase the runoff to the lake, which we agree with what Alicia was mentioning. Because the property is so small, it can't absorb or compensate for the area that'll be leveled. And let's face it, if you know the property we're talking about, they are going to have to level that property in order to build that structure. And uh, we believe it'll that uh, building of the structure and the construction process will impact the shoreline. And in doing that, if you've been by the property, we believe that that ridge that runs along the edge of the property on the lake side won't be undamaged once the building starts to take process. Now the site plan shows a septic runoff in which sands, sand is uh, placed down and it extends with our calculation to within three meters, less than three meters setback from the lake. My God, we're taking an awful chance with that. Anyhow, uh, what I was getting back to is when they put the, uh, if they do uh, put the cottage up, it's unlikely that they won't uh, uh, touch the ridge in order to get that done. We believe that the, the combined septic runoff will destroy vegetation and damage the ridge line, which will increase runoff into the lake. So we agree with what Alicia was saying about this runoff. We can't ignore it. We all know that the runoff into the lake impacts the fish spawning beds and the plant growth. However, the municipality had a lake assessment study uh, for, uh, for lake nospency because they were worried about it too. And I think the, the councillors here will agree that there was worry about it. And it was done, I guess it was presented in March of this year. And the report noted that the green blue algae had been found in the lake for the last four years. And in addition, the last uh, three times uh, between 2012 and 2013. And blue algae is a health concern for both Alicia's kids swimming in the lake or us. And so we think it should be, and for the wildlife, uh, wildlife as well. Some of the algae blooms that were located not far from where the pro proposed variants would result in an increased runoff. So the report proposed that the algae growth be investigated by a lake study. Now the municipality accepted the report and recommended that their uh, attempts should be made to minimize the actual area distributed along the lakeshore and that any future development on Lake Nosfensing include a 30 meter deep naturalized, naturalized buffer along the shoreline with limited allowance of vegetation removal or access. Now I understand what Greg was mentioning about the lots that are, uh, that the township has the ability to um, uh, promote or develop, but I bet you each and every one of those lots will conform to the rules that are in place on the bylaws not all of them are this short. Like just up the road, we have seven lots that were sold. And if we allow this one, are all seven of those going to say, hey, can I move my cottage closer to the lake? I mean, you just did it uh, for this couple here. And I'm not saying go outside the line on this. I'm just saying we're all here, I think, to protect the environment, including the lake. Now, uh, I'm still back to uh, whether or not uh, they meet the criteria for uh, a minor variance. Is the application desirable for the appropriate development of the lands in question? We don't believe it has. It cannot be considered a minor variance as the development goes against the lake preservation 
recommendations that the council has already done through the March report. Now we submit that if there's any potential for a development of this property that will impact negatively on the health of the lake, that at the very least that this application should be denied pending a completion of environmental impact study. Now, do you th that isn't too much to ask for, just to be sure that we're making the right decision for the years to come. Now, I think I heard Mr. Kelly mention he's been here 60 years. Now, his kids and grandkids and mine want to be able to come up to this lake and have a healthy lake. Now, the third, the third uh, test in the minor variance, does the application conform to the general intent of the zoning bylaw? We don't believe it does. And I think the question was asked at the very beginning, like what's changed? I can tell you uh, that where we live, that property has been uh, a first sale for like two and a half, three years. And the answer has always been the same. You can't build a permanent structure on it. And I know when I, uh, I spoke to the owner's wife when we first met them, she said it was an experiment. Well, now I can see what that experiment's about. But I have to tell you, I don't think it meets the requirements of a minor variance. The intent of the bylaw, it was to conserve the natural heritage features of the community. And more specifically, the lake's ecosystem and wildlife. Now the bylaws that are in place currently to prevent development where it may compromise public health and safety, i.e. the water system. As we've already indicated, there's a uh, potential for significant long-term impact to this lake. In addition, the proposed building is located on a small property. It's thin, it's shallow, and it's located at the narrowest section of this peninsula. So when you look at the map that was provided, it's the, thin, it's the thinnest part of that property, the smallest. So uh, what the applicants or the members of the committee may not be aware of is that each e evening and every single neighbor on our peninsula will tell you that there's deer going back and forth that use that property in the morning and in the evening. So we think that if the uh, property were to change from its existing uh, zone in which you can't build, that that will impact the deer as well. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A development in this section of the peninsula will force the deer out on the road where, where else can they go? But anyhow, that I'm just telling you about the wildlife part. The last criteria for the determination of the minor variance is whether the application conforms to the general intent of the official plan. Now the goals and objectives of the official plan speak to policy framework to protect water quality and ensure that the ecosystem planning is an integral part of the decision-making process. The township owns, own study recommends against any changes to the lake shoreline. A vote in favor of the application goes against that rec re uh, recommendation. Now it's important to note that to consider any application of minor variance, it must meet all four tests. Now, I think uh, the information I brought forward demonstrates the criteria for deeming the application a minor variance hasn't been met. In fact, it's very significant what they're asking. Now, we've also provided significant environmental reasons for the application to be denied. Now, if the committee feels that they do not have the necessary information to make an informed decision, 
that guarantees the safety of the lake and the community, we think they should divert your decision pending an environmental assessment. Now, I, I don't propose to be an expert in any manner or speaking. I'm just like the other people that you've heard from and in which Greg has uh, got comments from. We're, we think that the purpose of that assessment is to ensure that a combined impact of removal of vegetation, the, the putting up of the cottage and the screen porch for the shoreline buffer zone, the water drainage, the runoff and the discharge and the proposed septic drainage system will have an impact on the lake and the groundwater and the adjacent properties. And essentially, I'm just like all my other neighbors, we are asking you to do the right thing in this situation. And I'm asking you to think about uh, the other proposals that you have to go through time after time after time. You have got a whole community out here that are, are, are so concerned that we're, we're all trying to participate here. So I'm, I'm asking you to do the right thing here. And if you have any doubts, what would be the harm in asking for an environmental assessment on the property there if you put in a 20 by 40 or if that's inside of course outside anyhow i i appreciate your time um and i'm sorry if i rambled on too much but this is a concern for everybody here and i really appreciate what you're doing so thank you very much Jim, uh, we thank you for your time, and we know you're emotionally tied to this. Before you go, do we have do we have Jim's address? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. It's six six two Nosbin Singh Park Road. Okay. Yeah. And do you have uh, Jim's Brand. address, Terry? Pardon Brand. me. Brown. B R A U N D. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it. You have a nice evening. Uh, and Greg, and it, I, I should tell you, um, it came up, Anna, uh, because I'm technically a moron. That's so, okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> that's you. okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, Greg, uh, anyone Thank you else? for your forgiveness. <laughs> okay, thank you. I have one more person who I will let in. And, and Greg, has everyone been hearing everyone's comments? Uh, what do you mean? Like the next uh, app, the next person speaking, have they've heard the other two comments? They should. I, I send out an email to everyone who asked for the Zoom link, uh, giving a rundown of the, the order of the evening and, uh, and mentioned that they should follow along on the YouTube channel. So everybody should be watching the previous comments. Okay, thank you. The other two they should. I, I send out an email to everyone who asked to Zoom link, uh, giving a rundown of the, the order of the evening, and uh, I mentioned that they should follow along on the YouTube channel. So everybody should be watching the previous comments. Okay, thank you. Yeah, please. Lisa, is, is the YouTube muted? The audio uh, muted? Yes, I have just muted the YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. If you could state your first and last name and your address. Yes. Um, good evening, um, members of the Committee of Adjustment and members of Council. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to address you concerning this application. My name is Lise Curry, C-U-R-R-I-E. Uh, my year-round residence is 646 Ms. Bonsing Park Road. In addition to being the owner of a neighboring property, I'm also a licensed Ontario land surveyor and an engineer under the Drainage Act. And I have specific knowledge of the properties along Disponsing Park Road. Um, I have three different points that I would like to uh, bring to your attention. 
Um, <clears throat> the first concerns the proposed site layout, which is the sketch that was attached to the notice. Um, it does not sufficiently or accurately indicate the boundaries of the subject property um, or the requested setback from these limits. The, the dimensions of the property are not included with the, accepted, uh, the exception of the road frontage. The dimensions that do appear on the sketch were taken from the North Bay Mattawa Conservation Authority mapping and do not re represent the correct dimensions for the property. When considering a proposal for such a tight site with a request for significant relief from front and backyard setbacks, accurate site dimensions are a necessity. It is my suggestion that a sketch or plan of survey be prepared by an Ontario land surveyor for this purpose so that you have accurate uh, dimensions for your uh, set for the setback calculations, area coverage, uh, lot coverage, etc. Um, my second point is that in considering this application, it's important to understand the nature of the easterly limit of the parcel. Uh, the limit is riparian, which means that this easterly limit of the parcel is the water's edge of the lake. I'm somewhat confused by the applicant's comments about the parcel extending into the lake. It is my opinion that this is not the situation. This limit, this easterly limit, um, is not stationary. It's ambulatory, which means it moves. So, uh, you know, at one time of year, it's in one place, another time of year, it's in another place. Um, what happens is um, the eastern limit of the parcel moves whenever the elevation of the lake changes. So currently, Lake Nosbin Singh water level is very low. I currently have a strip of beach in front of my property that I don't usually get to enjoy because the water is so low. Um, when the water level does rise to its norm normal summer level, the easterly limit of the subject property will move inland and the parcel will become smaller. Um, it's likely that the requested front yard setback will not be adequate for the proposed structure when this limit moves with the normal water levels. Um, my third point is that the parcel is very low and is normally flooded to some extent. So significant fill will be required to provide a dry raised base for the structure and the septic system and to create ag um, adequate drainage for the property. This raises concerns with the reduction of the rear yard setback from, uh, from eight to five meters. Um, that only allows five meters for proper grading, uh, drainage and a vegetative buffer. Um, that will be a, quite a challenge to accomplish. Um, the reduction in the lakeside setback is also a concern as far as the grading for the site and protecting the lake from runoff. Uh, earlier, someone asked a question about um, a shore road allowance in front of this property. And just to clarify, there was never a shore road allowance in front of this property, but the original um, serving of the township, the uh, original shore road allowance was on the west side of the peninsula. So there's never been a shore road allowance on the east side. Um, just to recap, my three concerns are the need for accurate, accurate parcel dimensions for site that is this tight, um, consideration of the ambulatory nature of the easterly water limit and its ability to shift inland as the water levels return to their normal level, and the challenges in introducing adequate grading, vegetative buffering, protecting the lake if the setbacks are significantly reduced. Um, I thank you for your time and attention, and I look forward to your decision on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. We appreciate your comments for her tonight. Okay, uh, committee members, any other? Uh... Any discussion, any comments you want to make and then 
we'll ask Mr. Mueller to uh, respond to some of these concerns. Yes, Terry, go ahead. I, I don't think we, did everyone receive the email from uh, John Stevens? No, I didn't receive it. Oh, okay. It was a voice similar concerns. He lives on uh, Nosmonson Park Road as well. Uh, him and Irene, and Irene been, has been on the lake all her life. So the, the voice, every, everyone has a, basically the same concerns. But uh, Lise brought up an excellent point. The water is the lowest it's been in some time. Because we, other until this local, the late, recent rain, we had a very dry spring in comparison to normal levels. So I know because uh, we're, we're seeing rocks that uh, we don't normally see in front of our, we have an island in front of our house. So when it goes back to normal, it's going to be worse than it is now on that lot. The other thing is a lot of lots around here have springs on them. Obviously, this is one of them because it's constantly wet. Anyway, I don't want to repeat it, but that's because uh, John, John Stevens sent me an email and I thought he sent it to the committee as a whole. Erica, okay. do you have any comments? Any? Not above and beyond what's um, what's already been said. Um, you're just looking for comments at this point, right? Yep, and then we'll go yep. to the applicant. Yep. Frank or Alan, any of you guys have anything else to add? Same. Nope. No. Okay, um, Mr. Mueller, you've heard uh, some of these concerns. Do you have a response for any of that? Um, yes, if I may. Uh, I think there's an awful lot of concern about the septic system, and I understand that. Um, I believe what we proposed, um, you know, I had an expert look at it, and the Conservation Authority uh, has approved it. So, and, you know, I'm relying on their expertise. It, it's a raised system. It, it exceeds the capacity of the dwelling that I wish to build. Um, and, and just in commenting on tertiary systems, too, uh, I'm required to have like an annual contract with a tertiary system. And I believe there's also warning uh, systems built into that kind of um, septic system uh, with regards to water levels and that. So uh, if indeed that happens, then, then I believe uh, there'll be contract to come out and look after it. So I, I don't wish that anybody would feel that that... Um, have any have any need to look after that system or keep an eye on it um it's also i think probably and i'd be guessing uh, obviously but i would imagine there would probably be less than five percent of the systems on lake not sponsoring that would have such a, a system and, and i think it you know we we are concerned about the water for us it's a cottage um we we came there we've uh you know, we've watched the ducks swim in front of our property. There's, there's uh, vegetation in the water. We actually went out for a swim the other day. And, and, and there's a little uh, break through that berm that everyone is talking about um, already that's been existing. And from some of the garbage we cleaned up on the lot, uh, I suspect there may have at one time been a dock out there because it looked like a, an old dock had been out there. Um, but there is already an existing break through that, that berm. That berm is about three or four feet off the water itself and has mature trees on it. Um, a couple of the fallen down now, um, one on each end. But uh, and that is uh, where we are taking our measurements of where we think the water line uh, is as a high water marks on top of that three foot high berm um, and so and that is where we're basing our uh, estimate of the setback uh, from that water line so it's from that berm and that berm is is at least three feet above the water uh, we too have a beach at the moment so, so to speak there's a little bit of sandy area there in front of the berm on the water side um, but our, our measurements are from the top of that berm and we did have a surveyor go out there and put um, boundary marks for us so that we would be aware of where the, where the corners of our lot were, so to speak. Um, I guess my comment about the lot extending into the water reflects the fact that I thought it was like a half acre lot we were buying at one time, but uh, I can understand the, 
uh, Lisa's uh, comment about uh, the water level is the lot line, I guess. Um, there was talk about stormwater drain off. I'm not aware that there's any stormwater drainage at our lot other than just natural um, water that would come off the road or down the road. Um, there's no drain sitting on our, our specific property. Um, and so I, I'm not sure that, that that's an issue. Uh, the berm we talking about that's three feet high does not exist on the abutting lots as far as I can tell certainly not on the south side and I'm not so sure about Mr. Archer's property because of some of the vegetation there but I don't believe that it extends onto his property so that is kind of a unique to this lot so as far as water flow down the road across the road uh, in situations like that um, certainly the, that water can flow to the lake on, on the abutting properties. Uh, you know, we're just unique in, in, in actually having a berm. Um, and I think that all we're looking for for a dock would be to make uh, some sort of ability to go either through that berm or possibly up and over. I mean, uh, I presume at some point I'm still going to have to get approval from the Conservation Authority and if that is a, a real issue for them, then you know we're prepared to follow their advice on how they they would like that dock put in. Um, we quite like the property. We're 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 not the least bit interested in in causing any kind of runoff onto the lake, any kind of um, pollution uh, to the lake. Um, you know that the septic system is is upwards of. Twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars, and and one of the neighbors, um, and I actually think one of them has, has commented here, had suggested that they think it might be even higher. So we're certainly trying to um, look after the lake in that regard by by putting a first-class septic system in. Um, other than that, I, I appreciate uh, people, you know. Uh, calling in and expressing their concern about the health where we're not the least bit interested in doing anything to jeopardize that. And, uh, and all we're really looking forward to doing is putting a, a small cottage in there so that we can enjoy the, enjoy the lake. Yep. Thank you very uh, much. Committee members, uh, does anyone want to make a motion on this property? Any, any other discussions moving forward? It's kind of a difficult one. We've heard from uh, all of the neighbors or a lot of the neighbors and they're all concerned and they deserve to be concerned because they want to protect the lake. And I do agree, you know, what is the general intent of the township and the spirit of uh, the municipality. There's a lot of, lot of uh, there's a lot at stake here and there's, you know, we don't want to set precedent and do the bad thing or but I, I agree uh, with Greg. We're not talking about the septic system. We're talking about the minor variance on the on the whole building itself. So there's a lot to take. If uh, you feel that we should defer it, so we have some time, so we don't make the wrong decision or a quick decision, that's okay too. So you want a motion, John? Yes, I do, Terry. I I vote that it be uh, refused. I make a motion that it be refused okay. in its entirety. Thank you. Thank I will you. second that motion. Alan, thank you. And uh, then I'll ask, is that all in favor of that? Okay, we have that. Uh, do you want this recorded? Uh, should we record this? We'll record this vote, okay, Terry? Sure, please. Okay, so Terry Kelly. Yeah, that's a- I vote uh, that it be uh, denied. Thank you. Alan? Denied. Carrie, Erica? Denied. Frank? Uh, uh, I would like to uh, defer it, but so I guess I'm opposed to the motion. Okay, and I agree with Frank wholeheartedly I would have deferred it, and I guess that means uh, I'm sort of against it too. So there we have it recorded, Carrie. 
If you can read that. Uh, applicants, Doug and Mary Merle, vacant land on Osmondson Park Road, file number A, 202105. Uh, we, the undersigned in making the decision upon this application, have considered whether or not the variance requested was minor and desirable for the appropriate development and use of the land, and that the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and official plan will, will be maintained. Concur in the following decision and reasons for a decision on the 21st day of July, 2021, that the requested variance to permit a 14.6 meter setback from the water in the front yard and a five meter setback from the rear lot line uh, be denied. Thank you, Greg. Uh, can you please explain to Mr. and Mrs. Murrell what happens next? <laughs> Mr. Merrill, uh, tomorrow I will send you a copy of a notice of decision as well as a copy of the decision from the committee tonight. Uh, it'll, um, it'll contain all of the, all of the reasons and, um, and uh, I guess relevant information to, to the decision that was made. Uh, and, um, and yeah, that's uh, then we'll go from there. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry it did not go the way you were intended to. Greg, go uh, we'll yeah. move here. Our next. Uh, yes. All right. So the next application on the agenda is Marlad and Sagan. So I will let in Michael Marlad right now. No. Okay. Michael? Mr. Marlai? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. welcome to the uh, Committee of Adjustment for this evening and uh, We'd like to talk about your application, 506-520 Asheville Road, and that is to, to permit a land swap. If you can give your report, we'd appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much for hearing me. Uh, I'm Michael Marlat, agent representing myself and my wife, Patricia, of 520 Asterville Road, and our neighbors, Dr. John and Michelle Sagan of 506 Asterville Road. And these are joint or mutual applications for consent to sever and minor variants to facilitate a swap of triangles of land between our properties. Now the, the sketch attached to the applications illustrates the existing boundary and the proposed new boundary that create relatively small portions of each parcel that are proposed to be exchanged in order to realign and straighten the existing common boundary to rectify encroachment of part of my raised parking area and retaining wall and rectify encroachment of uh, occupied lawn area that actually existed when I purchased the parcel in 1983 and to improve the boundary angle from Asterville Road. The, the current boundary or the existing boundary uh, cuts quite a, a, an acute angle with, uh, with the limit of Asterville Road and uh, the the proposed proposed uh, adjusted boundary makes a closer. It's, it's certainly not perpendicular to Asterville Road, but it makes a, uh, a a more direct line down towards the lake, and uh, kind of coincides with the uh, uh, Sagan's driveway, etc. Uh, so it improves the boundary angle from Asterville Road. Uh, the minor variances are required in order to recognize that the existing area of each existing lot is deficient to the current bylaw standards. However, overall, the areas of the proposed swap are within 28 and a half square meters of being equal. And no new lots are proposed to be created by these applications. And uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank, thank you, Mr. Marley. Um, committee members on this one? 
Let's go with Terry, go. Um, I'm familiar with the property. I, it's right across the, the way from where we live. And I, I have relatives that live close by. And uh, without going into any explanations, it looks like the quilt behind Erica, it looks like a, a provincial map compared to what they're dealing with across the lake. So it's, it's like a quilt that is right out of control. I don't know who ever designed it or surveyed it. It really doesn't matter. But anything that would bring it into a line so that you know where your property is, I wish them the best of luck because that's been there for a long time since I was a boy. It's, it's, it really is a quilt. Terry, that anyway. would be in the 1950s, wouldn't that be? Uh, late 40s, early 50s. Thank you, John, for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, do you want to comment on that quilt uh, pattern? No comment for me. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Alan? I have no comments, John. <laughs> Frank? No, I'm good. Thanks. No, this is straightforward. I have no comments. Do we have a motion on the... Oh, uh, Greg, is there anyone in the chat room on this application? Uh, no, there's not. And no other comments received? We received a comment of no objection from the Conservation Authority and, uh, and my report of no objection, but it's uh, it's pretty straightforward, like you said. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion on the floor on this? I think Terry is going to put it forth to approve it. Both hands up on that one. Thank you. I, okay. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Terry. Second by? I will. Who got that? I did, I guess, John. Okay, Alan's got that. Okay, and all the, uh, do you want to read, uh, do you want me to? Yes, Eric. I'll read it. Thank you, Carrie, and then we'll, yeah. File number B, uh, there's one for the consent and one for the minor variance. So I'll just read the consent one first. Um, the purpose of the request and consent and minor variance applications is to facilitate a land spot between 520 and 506 Aspinall Road. A small piece of each lot is proposed to be exchanged to straighten the lot line. The minor, minor variances are required in order to recognize that the existing lot area of each lot is deficient to the current bylaw standards. No, no new lots are being proposed to be created through this application process. We, the undersigned in making the decision upon this application, have considered whether or not the requested consent is in conformity with the policies laid out in the East Ferris official plan and consistent with the requirements of Section 5124 of the Planning Act. Concur in the following decision and reasons for decision on the 21st day of July, 2021, that the requested consent to facilitate a land swap between the two properties in order to straighten the lot line be approved conditional upon the following for each application. That confirmation is provided that all taxes are paid up to date, that a plan of survey is prepared and filed with the municipality, and that a plan of survey be sent electronically to the municipality, to the municipality of East Ferris Community Planner, that the applicant pays $250 in penalization fees prior to the transfer of the parcel of land, that the deed of land is submitted to the secretary treasurer for the issuance of the certificate of consent, that section 53 of the planning act as amended applies to any subsequent conveyance or transaction of or in relation to the parcel of land being the subject of this consent, and that all conditions must be filed within one year from the date of this notice of decision has been given, otherwise this provisional cons consent will lapse. That was for the consent portion. And for the minor variance portion, concur in the following decision and reasons for decision on the 21st day of July, 2021. So the request of minor variances to recognize that the existing lot area of each lot is deficient. So the current bylaw standards be approved for file A 202106 to permit a reduction in the required lot area from two acres to 1.3 acres and A202107 to permit a reduction in the required lot area from two acres to 1.4 acres. Perfect. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie, do you need two motions, one for the first and one for the second? No? Awesome. Are, are we all in favor? It is carried. Thank you very much. Greg, if you can explain to Mr. Marley what happens next. Uh, okay, Mr. Marlet, I'll uh, send you a copy of the decision uh, and a notice of decision tomorrow, and it'll have all the detailed information about conditions uh, as well as timelines discussed tonight. Okay. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Greg, we'll uh, go to uh, application number three. Yes. Travis Bouchard. Bouchard. 
Travis in the room? Yes, admitting him right now. Thank you. Hello, Travis. You're we're welcome to the Committee of Adjustments. We're looking at the vacant land you have on Fay Road, file B 2021-22 and 23. You can give your report. We'd appreciate it. Travis, did you hear me? 10-4, here I am. Hi guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> um, my name is Travis Wiskert. Uh, I'm looking to make two new pieces of property on Fay Road, uh, each two acre parcels, each with 75 meters of frontage on Fay Road. That's about it. Pretty straightforward, is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I believe so. <laughs> okay, uh, Greg, can you share anything with us on that? Uh, yes, I can. So uh, we, we do have one person in the waiting room wishing to speak to this application as well. Yeah. Uh, so, but first I'll go over my comments. So uh, we have comments from the Conservation Authority. Uh, they, they have no objections, uh, but they just, or did just mention that uh, um, in the past that uh, we've discussed uh, impact lots around Trout Lake. So any lots that uh, may have a septic system uh, constructed uh, within 300 meters of the lake can be considered impact lots. Uh, so we, we did a site visit with the conserva or conservation authority, and uh, the front portion of, uh, of this property where the lots are being proposed is, uh, it, it, there's a lot of bedrock in one area, so one of the lots, uh, the septic system will probably fall within 300 meters, uh, which is fine uh, because we do have capacity for impact lots, uh, but um, it's just something that was brought up in uh, Paula Scott's comments and uh, something that I want to make the community aware of. Uh, but based on the, the lot frontage and lot area uh, and the lot layout, um, I have no objections with the applications based on the criteria of Planning Act and our official plan. Uh, and we did not receive any other correspondence on, on this, but we do have one uh, resident wishing to speak. Uh, okay. So if the, if the committee uh, would like, I can admit them now. Yeah, you can go ahead. You, you yeah, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Fay. Mr. Fay, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, welcome to tonight's meeting. And you would like to speak uh, in regards to this application. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes. It's, uh, I'm Brian Fay. I live on Fay Road. Uh, I'm only two properties at the end of the road. Um, the original road actually is on my property. Uh, you can see I have a, um, a survey here and it shows that the road allowance between concession 16 and 17 is in an, actually a straight line. The actual road dips down southerly onto my, well, onto my property, both sides. So I have concern about having a driveway or having him build property, basically in, in crossing my property to get, to get onto Fay Road. That's a good concern. Yes, it is. And I know that the, I know that the property is on my road. I was told I was I actually brought up John Fiore when he worked for the township a couple of years back, and the, the existing uh, fence line is still there. So you can see where the, the road in my property actually existed. Mm -hmm. And the road is actually quite a bit southerly uh, from the road allowance. So his property basically does not come out to Fay Road. It would actually stop, if I'm correct, on the road allowance between concession 16 and 17. Is that right? Unless you're giving him the road allowance. Mr. Fay, I recall that conversation with you a few years ago. I yes. Was on, I was on the committee at the time and that was brought forward. And I don't know what the final outcome was of that, Greg, I think you should, that should be addressed by the township. You know, does the road need to be realigned because it shouldn't be going over someone's property or it, it, what it don't should, we know? If it, okay. if, it gets, if it has to be realigned, if you're gonna go right over top all that bedrock, mm -hmm. obviously in years gone by when the township came up to a situation like this with all this bedrock, they would just go to the farmer and say, uh, Joe, we're gonna uh, build a road here and we're just gonna come on your property in this corner here and then go back out around because it never, they never blasted rock in those days. They just went around everything. Mm -hmm. 
And I was told actually by two people, John Fjord, that the road was actually on my property. And actually, uh, and, um, uh, Marius last year came out to cut trees down and he came to me and said, I need your permission to cut the trees. And I said, what would you need my permission for? He says, because the road's on your property. I have to have your permission to cut the trees down. I gave him permission. It didn't bother me to, have, you know, get a few trees cut down. But the road is on my property. And I've never been, it's never been bought for me. It's never been nothing. Hmm. Well, that's a, I, have, that's a I, have a big, I have a big concern about that. Mm -hmm. oh. that, is a, that is a concern. Yeah, I mean, we can't be letting someone have a, a lot of that trespass on someone else's land to get to their property, can we, Greg? So from the municipality's perspective, um, there, so our, our mapping shows that the road allowance is just wider in that location and that the road is on the road allowance. Uh, it's possible that that's incorrect. Uh, so the committee, the committee may wish to defer the application and ask for the survey work to be done uh, prior to an approval, which is the, the opposite order of operations that we normally do, but, uh, but it would clear up that issue. Uh, with regards to roads going around um, obstructions like this, uh, it's common in the municipality that, that roads do veer around large rocks or, or other topographical features. Uh, so the road itself will, will be deemed a forced road at this point. Uh, so the, the road won't be realigned. Uh, that, um, that's uh, not really practical and not usually what happens in those situations. Uh, there, there's a variety of things that could solve the situation, but, uh, but our, our mapping does show that the road allowance extends uh, where the actual physical location of the road is. Uh, so I don't really have anything else to add besides besides that. Uh, it's it's possible that that it may be incorrect, so we we may wish to verify. Uh, but I don't have any more insights into it at this time. Good, thank you. Yeah. Committee members, how do you feel about this application? Right, to me, it's going to have to be deferred until you get the uh, get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alan. Terry, you're nodding yes, that you agree? I, I know of a number of forest roads, John. In fact, uh, the overhead trestle on Nosbon Lake Nosbonsing Road is, is a forest road. It's on someone else's property. So it's not unusual, and that's almost a highway. That's a, a major thoroughfare, anybody going into Astorville. It's, mm -hmm. it's on someone else's property. It's a forest road, like Greg said. So, But I think we have to, I think it has to be deferred, and uh, we've got to find out what's going on. Okay, Erica. Any clarifications? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, thank you. Frank. Yeah, I remember that meeting as well. I was on the committee, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I like you, John. I don't know what the outcome was, so I I think we should defer till uh, we get more information. Mm -hmm. I think so too, and. I, I, I 100%. I think we have to defer it. We got to make sure that what we're doing is correct and legal and, and, uh, and uh, binding. Um, but I will add to it um, if it is. I, let's go back to the actual application, just so Mr. Bouchard knows where my head is at. I don't have a problem with the two uh, applications that are being presented, provided that they are in the correct boundaries and, and lie within the legal means to get accessibility to your lots. Just so you know, I don't want to defer it to, you know, to go one direction and then to give you another stepping stone later on down the road. And I, you know, I like wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind members making that comment and just so he has an understanding where, where other people are thinking on. I agree, John, myself, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Okay, I, I agree a hundred percent as well. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Bush, are you see the concerns that we have and where we're have to defer it? I understand. Thank you very much, Mr. Fay. We want to do the right thing. We want to uh, make sure that people aren't trespassing or encroaching on your property. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion on the floor for this? Okay. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Frank and Erica. And then I'll have you read that, Carrie. Uh, that applications B2021. 1-22 and B 2021-23 be deferred uh, to gather further information. Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. Greg, just really it's nothing to explain, we're just deferring that. Yeah. 
And do, do, I'll be in touch with you, Travis, and we'll discuss next steps. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bouchard. Thank you, Mr. Fay. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Excuse me. Hello. Yes. Uh, when, how would I find out what the outcome is or what the verdict is? For, uh, oh. That, that, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, Mr. Fay, we'll, we'll be sending. So anytime we defer an application, we go through the exact same circulation process that we that we did for this meeting. So there will be a new sign and you'll receive a new notice in the mail with all of the information about meeting dates and times. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, good night, gentlemen. Okay, Craig. Uh... Okay. And the applicant is in the waiting room for the final application. Thank you. Mr. Saunders, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to tonight's committee of, uh, committee of adjustment. And we're looking at your application right now. If you could give us a, a brief overview of what uh, you're proposing, that would be great. Yes, thank you all for your time. So my name is Josh Saunders. I'm working on behalf of uh, my wife, Mary Saunders, is the owner of this land. So we have a parcel of, of uh, vacant land on Levine Road and we're looking to develop one new lot by consent. The new lot would be approximately five acres and have road frontage of approximately 67 meters and a depth of about 300 meters. We are also looking at doing a lot addition um, onto the neighboring lot on the west boundary. And we would look, be looking to add about five acres um, about five to seven acres, the, the extent of the lot might change the depth. The width of that lot is about 80 meters, so we're not changing any, any frontage. Um, just the depth we're thinking might be better to extend it a little bit deeper. Um, there were some comments from the Mattawa Conservation Authority. Due to the size of the lots, they didn't have any, didn't seem to have any concerns with the um, new septics or anything like that. Uh, there is a portion of the property that there is a, a wetland, um, but there's there's good setbacks from all that, so no no big concerns from their end. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Mr. Saunders. I'm confused. I might not be the only one. Maybe I am though. The severed. I get the severed. I see that very clearly. The it's the lot addition. So where's that coming from? Do you have do you own the land on the other side then? I, yes, I also own, so that lot's under my name, the one and a half acre lot, and it's at 111 Levine Road. So okay. right now it's, it's part one. Um, I'm not sure if you have, if you have my sketch in front of you or not, but the part one plan 36R 11529. Okay. So, and, okay, got it. So you're taking it off the back end of your lot to move it over. Y yes, yes, exactly. Okay, okay. Awesome, thank you. So the depth of that might change. We're thinking we might make it uh, match the back of part one plan 36R 13695, uh, the one to the west of that. So we would just extend it a little bit further back if there's no concerns with that. Okay. Just to make it a, a cleaner lot kind of thing. Yes, appreciate that. Okay. Committee members, uh, comments, questions? Um, we've lost others. Frank, please go ahead. Um, <clears throat> he was talking about a, a lot addition and creating a new lot. Yes. Now, for that lot addition, would he not have to sever uh, off of his uh, the property in his name to have the lot addition put into onto the lot of his wife's? Greg, can you answer that? Uh, so he's acting as an agent on behalf of his wife. Uh, they they both signed the application and they both have the authority to to act for, on like with regards to this application for both the severance and the lot addition. Yeah, but wouldn't he have to sever his property to to he, have the lot addition? Involved, 
it is all the same property. So the, the severance for the new lot as well as lot addition are both being taken from the same existing lot. Okay, thank you. I know where you're going, Frank. Yeah, does, does he have to make it separate to, to add it? Yeah, two separate uh, yeah. Uh, proposals. Okay, it looks, it looks not our, our recommendations. There, there are two separate applications to, to achieve what they're asking to do. Okay, okay. thank you. Erica, any? No, there's nothing um, on my end. Thank you, though. Okay, Terry Kelly? I have no concerns, thank you. Okay, and Alan, I lost your visual, but Alan, I know you're there. Anyway, Frank, uh, John, I have no concerns either. No, I think it's pretty straightforward and the severed lot is very large. Craig, is there anyone in the chat room that wants to talk on this property? There is not, no. Any comments received, Greg? Uh, just no objection from the Conservation Authority and uh, no objection from me as well. Okay, thank you. All right, so is there a motion on the floor in this property? Oh, Frank. Frank has a motion, and that motion would be to do what, Frank? Sorry, Frank. What's your, what is your motion, Frank? Sorry. Sorry, I had it on mute to accept the uh, um, as presented. Thank you. Second by Erica. Thank you. File number B2021-24 and B2021-25. The applicant is requesting consent to sever from the Committee of Adjustment for the purpose of creating one new lot for residential purposes, as well as one lot addition. We, the undersigned, in making the decision upon this application, have considered whether or not the requested consent is in conformity with the policies laid out in the East Ferris official plan and consistent with the requirements of Section 5124 of the Planning Act. Concur in the following decision and reasons for decision on the 21st day of July, 2021, that the requested consent to create one new additional lot and a lot addition be approved conditional, on, conditional upon the following for each application. That confirmation is provided that all taxes are paid up to date, that a plan of survey is prepared and filed with the municipality, um, that a plan of survey be sent electronically to the municipality of East Ferris Community Planner, that the applicant pays $250 in finalization fees prior to the transfer of the personal land, that the application is required to pay $1,000 per consent application to the municipality of East Ferris for the parkland dedication fee prior to the transfer of the severed land. And this is for file number B2021-24 only. That the transfer of land is submitted to the secretary treasurer for the issuance of the certificate of consent. That subsection 53 of the Planning Act as amended applies to any subsequent conveyance or transaction of or in relation to the parcel of land being the subject of this consent, and that all conditions must be filed within one year from the date the notice of decision has been given. Otherwise, this provisional consent will lapse and the application for consent shall be deemed to be refused. Perfect. Thank you. All those in favor? It is carried. Thank you. I counted that. Greg, if you can explain to Mr. Saunders what happens. Yes. Mr. Saunders, uh, I'll send you a notice of decision and copy of the decision tomorrow. We will have all the information on conditions and uh, and timelines that you need to meet. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. You as well. Okay. There's no more applications tonight. Uh, no reason to go on camera? No. Correspondence? None for this session? Nothing tonight, no. Well, so we just have the adjournment. Very, you know, Frank and Alan will like to adjourn the meeting. That the committee of adjustment meeting adjourn at 8.54 p.m. Thank you, Carrie. All those in favor?